Now, like Dr. Coffin, explain this to me, though, because you know, his other big major films, like the great global warming swindle, they have all these climatologists and scientists and physicists from around the world, literally the top names. There's now 37,000 of them have sent a letter and petition yeah. to the government. The government won't even read it, won't allow them in testimony. Only Al Gore, who lies and says he invented everything from Kitty Hawk to, you know, to fire, uh, is, 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 is the only expert up there. He openly owns one of the carbon companies and said, what's wrong with me making money? I mean, it's the outrageousness of this. But, but also they say it's not just the heat from the sun. It's that different type of nuclei, yeah. particles... Right come into the atmosphere. Can you explain that? Yes, there's two. And it's, it's again explained uh, in much better graphics than it did in the first one in this new Emerging Science DVD. really shows very clearly it's not the total amount of energy that the sun emits, but the kind of energy. You have incoming cosmic radiation from exploding supernovae from out in the uh, galaxy and so forth that eventually get to Earth. Those, and it's been shown in experiments now to be correct, those cosmic radiation particles, when they enter the Earth's surface or enter the Earth's atmosphere, they start to condense out and ionize and create water droplets. When they create water droplets, clouds eventually form. And when you have clouds, low elevation clouds, if you've ever flown an airport, uh, airplane above these clouds, it is a bright white. That's because the sun is reflecting off of those clouds. Now, let me understand. Energy. So it's almost like just the space rays, not just the sun's rays, and this whole spectrum of different particles Absolutely. come in like, like microscopic meteorites and create almost a uh, energy field, uh, which then uh, generates the nuclei to allow the rain droplets to form. So it's a beautiful, en it's a beautiful engine. It's not a crime. And carbon dioxide is what plants breathe. It's not a chemical weapon that will... Kill you. Water's good. <laughs> Oxygen's good. It's not with Al Qaeda. Absolutely. In fact, we can probably have three to four hundred percent increase in our carbon dioxide, and the Earth would be much better off for it. Both plant productivity, food production, and it will not hurt us. Uh, in they, fact, I've seen those studies that greenhouse. during uh, uh, during some of the warming periods with the dinosaurs uh, were the most plentiful. That it was many times higher, and that yeah. the Earth was much more tropical. Yeah, absolutely. Probably about ten times greater concentration during those that period of time, uh, and the Earth was much more tropical. Uh, vegetation was flourishing and abundant, and every time. In fact, we have the science has actually shown that there's been a twelve percent increase in food production, global food production, because of the increased carbon dioxide we've had the last fifty years. There's nothing negative about carbon dioxide; it's all positive. But yet they're calling it a pollutant, and because because it's a pollutant then they can control our lives. Yeah, but I've done the di the dihydrogen monoxide joke with people at, at restaurants yeah. on the street, and right. I tend to go out with a camera and do it because you could say, hey, we need to restrict carbon dioxide, right? And they go, yes, it's evil. And I go, what about dihydrogen monoxide? It's in the water. And almost every adult, even people in suits downtown, will go, yes, ban it. It's water. I assure the viewers, people that support this, that water is not bad. Absolutely. You know, it is amazing. We have been so sensitized in our educational process that anything chemical is bad for us. Well, I'm afraid that anything that we eat, drink, or otherwise is chemical, and the fact that we have this aversion to the main chemical uh, is been ingrained in us in our educational process, in the television ads, all the rest of it, so that we just re re recoil away from it, and we shouldn't. We have to understand what it is and then treat it accordingly. Well, uh, what about the brainwashing? Did you know that there are scores of video games where, where the zombies yeah. are, are carbon dioxide blobs? and the kids shoot them, and then it's just total brainwashing in the schools. And it the is. New York Times reports that kids go home and write mock tickets to their mother because they take a hot bath, and the mother goes, I'm glad they're ordering me around this. I mean, they're turning us into a total Stasi society. What about the Green Bill with the home inspections and the federal language about uh, they can kick you out of your house, no judge, no jury? Just, I mean, this is total tyranny. It is total tyranny, and you and I have, and others, have been warning the people for 15 years or more about this very thing. It's now right in front of us, and we have a last opportunity to stop it by calling your congressmen and senators and saying, no, I'm going to throw you out of office if you vote for these things. 
and there's just not one thing. There's a dozen of them out there. It would be best if we just shut down Congress and they didn't do anything for four years. I agree. Now, for those that don't know, dihydrogen monoxide is the scientific term for water. And I was just making the point that, that, that ask your friends or family, but, but put it in a carbon dioxide debate. Say, for the environment, sh shouldn't we have a carbon uh, uh, tax on dihydrogen monoxide? You can also give them the scientific name for salt. And nine yeah. times out of ten, they'll say ban it. And right. Now, now you, said, you said there's about a dozen. Uh, there's the climate change bill, the carbon tax bills, the water, uh, Clean Water Restoration Act. Uh, there's the rewilding. All these things you warned about, they're now trying to ram through right now because they think Obama's got control of the entire government. Tell us about some of the things that uh, they're trying to push through. Well, I think that the water bill, the clean water bill reenactment is really dangerous. It basically puts... You're talking about our economy with the cap and trade legislation. With the water, you're taking control over water, which you need every single day to live. And if the federal government controls the water of every acre of land in the United States, it controls you and I, period. I mean, it controls our crop production. It controls everything. And as a consequence, uh, you look at what these bills do, and every single one of them draws control over a basic thing in our society that we need to have to live. And once that is done, then the federal government basically controls us. You have no choice in the matter. You have to do what they say, just like they did in the old Soviet Union, or you're thrown out of your house, you're, you're prevented from buying food, you're, you name it. And I'm not saying it's going to happen next year. But they have that potential. They have the right to do it now once these laws pass. And there has been no time in all of history where a bad bill like that has been passed, legislation been the Roman Empire or whatever, that it hasn't been abused. Well, listen, I have the head time. of... I, exactly. I have the head of city here federally funded these youth brigades in red and black uniforms. People can yeah. Google city here and watch them doing their chanting and drilling. And where everything's so bankrupt now, you have to get a job with the government out of high school doing this. And it says, I have national newscasts saying they're going to have quasi-governmental groups, mainly young, stupid, uh, you know, uh, ignorant, power-tripping young people. And it already sh has shown them on the news that say climate police out shouting people down like Mao Zedong's uh, youth brigades. That, actually, that's how they're modeled. And they even have little blue Obama books that they carry. And just like in China, I'm not making this up. I have the newscast waving them as they scream at you. And already in Austin, if you park an SUV by Barton Springs, they are slashing tires. They're out there enforcing. I mean, folks, I'm not kidding when I say they're already here. And I have the head of city here saying they're going to use them to enforce on us. I mean, yeah. this is nightmarish, Dr. Kaufman. It is. Brown shirts and under Hitler. Uh, the Red Brigade under uh, in China, you name it, is we're following the same pattern of all this des all these despots in the past. Can't we see that? You know, we have been worrying about it for years, decades even, and here it is. It's at our doorstep, and everybody's yawning. Well, not everybody in the listening audience. I doubt that, but for the most part. Society is yawning, and I just cannot believe how they could be missing. That you know everything is going to work out all right, honey. Don't worry about it. It's going to work out. Those people will never do anything like that. Well, I'm sorry, folks. History shows that those people will do exactly what we're talking about, given the opportunity, and they are creating that opportunity right now. Well, they say they're going to wall off all the major NAFTA highways and keep what half the. I mean, I mean, you've put together the maps off their own documents. Where half the country's off limits to us, and and everywhere they get control, they they are rewilding. They are all over the West harassing people off their own property. I mean, this is going on. It is. It really is. We haven't heard a lot about it in the major urban areas because uh, they have deliberately, basically compartmentalized everything in this country so that we do not hear what's going on in another part of the country. I go and talk to different groups in different parts of the country, and they think that they're the only ones this is happening to. It's happening to everyone. And we need to re – our property rights are being destroyed. You have the Kelo case back in 2005 that basically changed the Fifth Amendment from public use to public uh, purpose. Uh, it, be, it guts the whole purpose of, of property rights protection of the government. I mean, it, you name it, it's been stepwise, one by one by one. Our protections are falling, and now they're cascading. Uh, I have never seen such a push, 
so fast, so hard, uh, as we've seen since Obama has become president. We all knew it was going to be bad, but well, I, even I didn't realize it was going to be this bad. Well, I've got it here in my folders. I'm digging around for it right now. I'll probably find it during the break, but hundreds of articles a week saying babies are bad, they have a big carbon footprint, yeah. we need to ban having babies or put taxes on them, and Australia is actually trying to pass laws. They're getting rid of the baby credits in California. Uh, they're in women's magazines telling women marriage isn't good, breaking up with your family's good, don't have kids. I mean, this is a real culture of death, but humans have a hunger for life. I think they're going to have trouble implementing this. I mean, they're in power is what I'm saying. And it's one thing to pass the laws. It's another thing to be able to actually put this stuff into place. Yeah, that is very true. And it's amazing. Last year, maybe, maybe 14, 15 months ago, 80% of the uh, population here in the United States believed that global warming was generally caused by man. 